Good morning. My name is John Duckworth, ex Fifth Loyals, North Lancashire Regiment, and also ex Four Queens Lancashire Regiment. Today is the 15th of February 2022. 122 years ago, the Kimberley area of South Africa was being defended against the Boers by the 1st Battalion, the Loyal Regiment. They were under siege for 124 days and they were only relieved after that time by Sir John French and his cavalry. Ever since that day, every year since that day, the Loyal Regiment have laid a wreath and had a memorial service for their fallen comrades. This is the uh, South African Memorial plaque and it is situated on Avenham Park, Preston, Lancashire. Wandering photographer, David. Don't move. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got 
got John as our official photographer today. Good morning, gentlemen. Yeah, he's very good. His charges are very reasonable. <laughs> he's only showing his Apple phone off. <laughs> Order, standards. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are here today, having braved the elements, and I hope to continue to brave the elements this morning, uh, to celebrate the 122nd anniversary of a very important uh, date and event in the history of the Loyal Regiment. North Lancashire, namely the lifting, the raising of the siege of Kimberley on the 15th of February 1900, after four months of siege from the 11th of October 1899. And you'll hear about this shortly in the reading of the official citation. This led to the granting of Battle honour of Kimberley to the Loyal Regiment, uh, a unique battle honour carried by no other regiment or corps in the British Army. Behind me is the memorial to South Africa. It was originally sited on the flag market in 1904 to commemorate uh, all those uh, lost in the Boer War, 1899 to 1900. And it contains names of 86 officers and men of the Loyals who gave their lives in the Boer uh, War campaign. In 1919, it was moved from the flag market to here to this site in order to make room for the construction and siting of the cenotaph style memorial which is currently on the flag market in Preston. And every year since uh, 1919 there has been a parade here down at the memorial uh, to celebrate and it is to celebrate rather than commemorate, to celebrate the relief of the Kimberley. You'll now hear the official Kimberley citation given by Kingsman Bostock of the Duke of Lancaster's Regiment. Kimberley, 11th of October 1899 to 5th of February 1900. The town of Kimberley lies between these two principal diamond mines, Kimberley and the Kabirs in Cape Colony of South Africa, almost on the frontier of Orange Free State. When the Boer War threatened to break out in the autumn of the 1899, before the town of Kimberley was reinforced by headquarters and four companies of the 1st Loyal North Lancashire Regiment, strength, nine officers and 413 men. They were the only regular troops in the town. The remainder of the garrison consisted of the Kimberley Volunteers, 540 all ranks. Later, the town guard was raised from among the inhabitants. The total number of people in 
England itself, when the town was first invested by the, uh, invested by the Boers, was about 48,000 British and Imperial personnel, including 12,000 women and 10,000 children. As soon as the war broke out on the 11th of October 1899, the Boers crossed the frontier into Cape Colony and threatened the Kimberley. Colonel Kekowich of the Loyal North Lancashire Regiment thereupon assumed supreme control of the town and the civil population. The siege of Kimberley went on for a long time and food stocks of the defenders began to fall. Vegetables and meat and milk became very scarce. On the 12th of December 1899, all food stocks were taken over by a supply committee and everyone was put on a fixed scale of rations. On the 2nd of January 1900, the meat ration was reduced to a quarter pound and by the middle of the month, the issue of horse flesh had commenced. Soup kitchens were established and some 8,000 pints were distributed daily. On the 17th of December 1899, Garrison heard the sad news that the relieving force under Lord Methuen had been defeated at the Battle of um, Magus Fontaine on the 10th of December and that all hope of early relief for the besieged town was gone. Finally, on the 15th of February 1900, General French's cavalry division had reached Kimberley and raised the siege which had lasted through four most difficult months. In 1904, the 1st Battalion of the Regiment was awarded the Battle Honour, Defence of Kimberley, and honour held no other regiments in the British Army. The Kimberley Volunteers became in due course the Kimberley Regiment, which was allied to the Loyal Regiment, now the Duke of Lancaster's Regiment. Thank you. Gentlemen. On your behalf, can I extend a very warm welcome to the first citizen of Preston, our Mayor, Councillor Iqbal, who is him, himself a veteran, having served 12 years in the Royal Engineers. And also a very warm welcome to Padre, the Reverend Kevin Savage, who is himself a veteran as well, uh, an ex-army and Padre. We're going to conduct our service for us today. Beloved in the Lord, we are met this day to glorify God for his great mercies towards us in times of war. To remember with thanksgiving all those who have laid down their lives in the cause of justice, freedom and peace. God help that in all the ways of our life, we may be worthy of God. The Lord Jesus Christ, faithful and true, grant you praise. And as the royal regiment was royal to our sovereign on earth, so may we, in royalty to be, our heavenly King, faithful unto death for thy truth's sake, who art with the Father and the Holy Ghost, one God, a world without end. Amen. 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 The reading is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 20. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light, light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before them, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Christ came to fulfill the law. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, 
not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. It's a, a very powerful piece of scripture that we've heard read there. And there is honesty, and there is strength, and there is reliability. Those are the things that are going to come to the fore. And the defence of Kimberley reminds us of those British characteristics, if, if you like. Uh, those things which we have come to lord to praise two simple things an unflappable practicality you see a job you get on with it coupled with an innate sense of duty and of responsibility you see something and you get on with it uh, Martin Bell, who left his uh, life as a, a wandering journalist to become a, a, a politician, wrote a, a number of books that uh, reflected on his experiences in the world. And he looks at our modern world and he mourns the loss of, of values uh, that have exemplified British society for so long. And he points a finger at television, calls it the God that failed, along with its equally guilty partner, the culture of celebrity. It reminds us that that which the, the, the world lifts up is often very trivial. And we need to turn again to those things which we value in life, the things that make us who we are. Courage, that indomitability. But I do believe that the things that Martin Bell mourns as losses to our society can be recovered. If we take the example of those who have gone before us, we have most of us standing here served in various places, in various sets of circumstances. We know the, the men and women along whom we, alongside whom we would stand, for whom we would give our very selves. And much of what we have built has been upon the basis that our God is with us. He has been so faithful to us over the years. Perhaps, if as a nation we can bring ourselves to turn to him again, to reinstate those values which we have lost, perhaps then again, as a nation, we can begin to grow and find that understanding and compassion and companionship, that devotion, to duty, that selflessness, which allows us to be the people that we ought to be. Those things that Martin Bell thinks have been lost, we can remind our nations and our communities about, and we can look to God again. So we have something that we can look back to. <coughs> Our forebears have given us a, an example. The strength, loyalty, service, 
and compassion. And we can share those values still with those who are around us to lend them strength and encouragement. God, give us grace so to do. On the reverse of the order of service, you'll find an act of dedication. Give us wisdom, give us courage, give us hope, and keep us faithful to Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. In our prayers, when I say, Lord, in your mercy, I invite you, if you wish, to respond here our prayer. In this time of international tension, we pray for the leaders of the nations, that you will guide them in the ways of freedom, justice and truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. In this jubilee year, we pray for Her Majesty the Queen, and give thanks for her, her faithful service to our nation. Bless her, we pray, in all her duties. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. We pray for those who serve in the armed forces of the Crown, that they may have discipline and discernment, courage and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Pray for our enemies, those who wish us harm, that you may turn the hearts of all people to kindness and friendship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayers. Our pray for the wounded and the captive, the grieving and the hopeless, that in all their trials they may know your love and support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Most holy God and Father, hear our prayers for all who strive for peace and all who yearn for justice. We give thanks for those who have gone before us and ask that following their example, we too may serve loyally and courageously. And in your mercy, bring us all in the end to the peace of your presence. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good Render to no man evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour all men. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, upon you and remain with you all. Amen. Amen. Pray. Pray. Come. Carry standards.
March off, the size up for the standard. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your attendance uh, this morning. Pray this miss. Thank you. Come on, see me. <laughs> <laughs>